Welcome back to the Beyond the Wormhole series and Kerbal Space Program. For the last few episodes, I've been uh, building my Seleuco Exoplanet Colony Base, and I actually finished that in my last episode, Episode 3, where I used this SSTO to deliver these cargo modules down to the surface and set up this nice little base here on the South Pole. And today we're actually just going to be going on a little joy ride with this uh, SSTO shuttle here with two of my Kerbals to Seleuco's moon, Tot, which is an asteroid moon, really small, but kind of jagged and cool. You can get some cool views of Seleuco from the surface. So I'm just going to wait till my colony ship in orbit, kind of like the derelict colony ship that I left over from carrying all the cargo out to the planet. Um, I'm actually going to stop by to refuel um, just because uh, the um, encounter with Tot is going to be a little bit difficult since it's on a equatorial orbit and right now we are at the South Pole. So we're going to have to do some pretty big inclination changing burns, which is why we're going to um, rendezvous with the derelict um, colony ship in orbit to refuel and then continue on to Tot. But yeah, here I am just breaking through the clouds here and building up my horizontal speed. When we get uh, to kind of like the edges of the atmosphere, we'll turn on our um, closed cycle mode for these rapier engines and we'll be burning liquid fuel and oxidizer. And we'll use that kind of like rocket mode to boost us the rest of the way into orbit. Kind of just your standard SSTO ascent profile. But I do have these nuclear engines here on this craft. Um, oh, there I go, just switching that mode there, just like I was talking about. But like I was saying, I have these nuclear engines on here as well, so that once I am in orbit, I can use the much more efficient nuclear engines that only use liquid fuel to complete all of my um, orbital transfer burns to and fro, um, as, as you might say. But here I am just plotting my final circularization burn, and I'll uh, just let you guys watch for a second here while I finish that up. Okay, we're in orbit. Now I got to figure out how to get an encounter, or not an encounter, but a close flyby to our colony ship. And so we're on very similar orbits right now, but I just have to make a quick inclination adjustment to match my inclination. So I'll be burning um, either normal or anti-normal. Don't remember which one that is. Um, but I just set it as my target. And uh, if you're on a fairly similar orbit, your, your orbits will kind of like oscillate towards each other kind of like how like when you're in a car and like your blinker like seems to oscillate in and out of synchronization with the blinker in the car in front of you it's kind of like that since you're traveling at just barely different speeds you might have to wait a little bit longer till you just ha like happen to randomly float by your target in orbit so that's what i've done here just to save fuel so i've waited like a few days in orbit till i'm just kind of like drifting close enough to um burn the last couple kilometers towards it myself and there it is in the background um just about just a little bit over four kilometers away so i'm just killing off my relative speed and burning towards it and then rinsing and repeating that um relative to the target on my nav ball and uh yeah standard docking operating procedure or as some of you might know it the lown lazy method of docking which is the best way. That's the way I learned how to do it, for sure. And we're close enough to see the habitation ring still spinning. Looks like I forgot to turn those off as I uh, left this um, kind of like derelict uh, transfer vehicle in orbit with no Kerbals in it. So I'm actually going to have to fly over just to do a little quick spacewalk. Check out the view. But yeah, I got to go turn those rings off. Um, <clears throat> And then I will pilot the craft from inside so that I can get this craft to help align to, to like so I can set the uh, SSTO as my target from this craft and they can like I both set them to target and I'm controlling them from the docking ports so that they'll like kind of like mutually align themselves together and then all I have to do here is just kind of use the RCS to kind of like force my prograde vector into the target vector on my nav ball. And that's how I'm doing this docking here. And we're docked. So, like I said, the transfer out to TOT is going to cost a little bit more fuel than usual because um, 
we're on a completely different elliptical plane, like almost ra- like 90 degrees radial relative to Tot's orbit right now. So we're gonna have to do some pretty expensive um, inclination changing burns. So I'm just using some of the extra fuel left over um, from the liquid fuel tanks here to fill up my SSTO. And now that we're done with that, let's uh, get my Kerbal back in the SSTO. We're taking two Kerbals to Tot today, um, which is gonna be pretty cool. And I'm just undocking from the mothership here and burning away. Time to start thinking about our transfer out to Tot. So I'll set that as my target. And I'll just kind of burn prograde until I get an intersection on the orbit. Um, and just see, use like the next orbit button to see kind of like when I might have like a fairly close flyby. And it looks like we do have one in just a couple orbits but I'm still not getting an encounter, so I just have to play around with the like radial and the normal um, markers on my prograde controller here. Not my prograde controller, my uh, maneuver controller here. And looks like I'm just gonna figure it out once I get there. So I'm gonna just burn most of the way and I'll figure it out in just a second. Looks like I gotta burn for just under 700 meters per second. And I'm executing that now. All right, looks like we're most of the way there. Um, I'm just gonna do some adjustments to try and get that encounter I was trying to get before. Um, yeah. Looks like with some radial burning and there I go, I got one. So that's cool, only 60 something meters per second to force that encounter. Um, and we are on our way to Tot in the next couple of hours, I think. Or days I don't know I accidentally um, have been recording these in the wrong aspect ratio which is why I kind of like the bottom half of my nav ball and my like heads up display here is cut off I'll fix that in the future but just thought I should mention that um, yeah you just won't be able to see like the altitude meter and uh, I guess the bottom half of the bottom like 10% of my nav ball there but I guess that's all right um, and I actually can see taut in the distance there and since I'm on this like completely different inclination plane, I'm actually going to start burning retrograde to target. I've kind of set it as a target and I'm almost treating it as if it were an asteroid. And it relatively is like an asteroid in and of itself. It's a very small moon, probably a captured asteroid, um, in fact. And so um, I'm, I'm starting to burn retrograde relative to my target, which will begin to match my orbit with Tot. Um, and... Uh, in so doing match my inclination and that's essentially what orbiting an object in space is is just matching your orbit um so in in a very i guess docking or i guess a ro orbital rendezvous and just kind of like circularizing around an encounter is kind of the same thing actually it just depends on like what relative to what on your nav ball if that makes sense but here i am captured around taut very small moon as you can see um, basically an asteroid um, and I'll and it's such low gravity that I'll be able to land this thing very easily just using these two nuclear engines here and in the next couple uh, little scenes here I'm gonna just figure out where to land and get some cool views here but I'll let you guys watch for a second while I figure that out Yeah, kind of just like slow down and then belly flop down. Um, yeah, this thing's probably got like way less than 1% curb, curb in uh, gravity. So uh, this ship probably only weighs a couple hundred pounds or something like that. I have no idea how much it weighs in Kerbin's gravity either. But, you know, very light. Risk of damaging it is not too terrible um, by doing like some sort of belly flop maneuver just to land. And there's this big crater here. I'm kind of liking this area. Um, getting some screenshots there. But I'm actually going to try to land kind of like closer to the ridge of this giant impact crater here. And get some views of Seleuco from its asteroid moon, Tot. 
which we are landing on in just a second. Looks like my landing gear are kind of like bouncing me around. It's probably best not to even use them. And we have touched down. Actually, probably not a good idea to have these out when I'll be like loading in and out of physics time warp. Maybe it'll like bounce my craft around. But let's get out and put some boots on the ground here. Or I guess check it out with my jet pack. Some cool views from the moon here. All right, I got a flag planted down. Let's do some science. You guys can pause that and read that if you care. Um, but yeah, let's get my other buddy out here. Wait, I'm watching the sunset. I gotta put my sunglasses on. All right, we got both of our Kerbals out, checking out the night side of the moon. We can see kind of like taut, uh, not taut, we can see like Seleuco's very interesting weather cycle here um, where the clouds kind of like circle around it, the point that faces closest to the star, which is kind of interesting. Very interesting cloud formations on that planet for sure. I'm actually gonna jetpack over here and check out this giant impact crater Gravity's so low, um, I can go pretty far just on my jetpack. All right, it's kind of cool, but it's a little bit more of the same. I might as well plant a flag though. And let's head back. Whoa. I could probably get into orbit on just this jetpack, actually. Getting some more screenshots. I've actually overshot my uh, my ship here. All right, back in the ship, time to go home. Um, let me just pitch up here and burn away. All right, looks like we're on an escape trajectory out of taut. There it goes in the distance on time warp. See ya, okay. Now let's try to figure out how to get our inclination so that we can like um, match um, or like I guess pass over our surface base on the way back which is at the south pole so I'm actually going to try to just for convenience's sake get back into a polar orbit to pass over the north pole and also the south pole and I'm going to try to do just like a straight re-entry here so hopefully I don't burn up in the atmosphere. Um, I should have enough liquid fuel to switch back over to my air breathing engines and fly the rest of the way if I'm not exactly super accurate on my trajectory here. Um, I, my stuff disappeared. I actually have to go in the tracking station and reload it, but there, there it is at the South Pole. I can set it as my target now. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have to like go back into the tracking station and then like your surface bait or like your landed ships won't be like activated and it looks like they've disappeared but you just have to like reactivate them in the or like turn that filter off in the tracking station and they'll be there but here i am passing over the north pole and re-entering the atmosphere looks like i'm not gonna actually fully re-enter on the first pass which is interesting um let me just warp around again 
and will definitely come down um, this time for sure. Yeah, we're really burning off speed. That's good. And we'll just try to glide all the way there as far as we can go. And then we'll open up our air breathing mode again and light this candle all the way back to the base. All right, we got those engines on and uh, in just a few more kilometers we'll be able to see the base on our there it is it's like a little green tracking bracket there um, not too far out we'll just point towards it and just fly the rest of the way see the black hole in the, in the sky there pretty cool Love to see that in real life. It'd be crazy. All right, we're coming down on the little fjord or like valley thing here that the base is on. It's on that little peninsula just past the lake, or I guess the pond. I don't know. Um, but I'm coming in for a landing, I'm trying to kill off some speed. Looks like we got a little bit of a bumpy landing, but we are here safe and sound. Let me just taxi over onto the base. This thing has like a super wide turning radius. Let me try to get it a little bit closer so they don't have to like go on a hike just to get back home. All right, we're back. That's another mission success for the Saluko colony on this exoplanet world that we're trying to make a new little camp out spot. Like, well, well I'm not going to go as far to say a new home world, but pretty cool chill spot we got going on here. But yeah, I'm sure you guys are like kind of tired of Saluko content for now, but this is going to be the end of my little Saluko mini series in the Cacao Below Planet Pack series that I've been doing. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.